Hey everybody, welcome back. Today we're gonna to be moving forward with our model building progression, and we're gonna be learning about how to pickle our models in Python. Now, you might think that pickling has to do with food. I like to eat pickles, I like to pickle my onions, that's fine, okay? The process, the overall, well, you know, what we're doing is gonna be very similar to the, the, the end goal when you're pickling foods, right? You have fresh food today, and you wanna do something to that fresh food, so that it won't go bad and you can eat it again later okay if we if they called this module flash freeze it'd be like the same thing right yeah fresh stuff today and you want to be able to have it be fresh enough to eat later uh, but there might be you know an indeterminate amount of time in between those two points not a problem we can do that with python as well what that's going to allow us to do is take our trained model um, so once we have a model that we like we're getting the results we like we're good with the variables, we're good with the data, it's a repeatable process. You're not going to want to train your data set every single time that you want to spit out new information, right? I don't want to train my data set every single day when I come in to make fantasy projections. I want to have a trained model already based on historical data, and I want to be able to just plot my model in, put in today's data, and give my projections. That's what Pickling is going to allow us to do. So, let's go ahead and hop into it. Um, this first section of code, I'm going to go real quick through it. We're not going to explain it. I've literally copied and pasted it from previous videos. Um, so we're just going to run through what we're doing. We're pulling in our sample data. We're pulling in our clusters. And we're making our models. Okay, And we're getting our little predictions on them just as a baseline reference point. So if you have not seen any of this, if this is new, go check out some previous videos. Get caught up to date. Um, alternatively, this code here is going to be live on my website as well, nicksniche.net. Um, and there you'll be able to actually step through the code cell by cell. You can download this specific Jupyter Notebook that I'm using right now. So you can see I have some, some explanations built in. So if you, you just want to download this and work through it, you're going to be able to do that just fine too after the video. Not a problem. So like I said, we're just going to run through here. We're pulling our data in. We're adding a couple of columns. We're pulling our clusters in. Defining an empty cluster dictionary. Yaddy, yaddy, yaddy. So we end up with this our player, matchup, game date, fantasy points they had, average of the last three games, five games, seven games, season average. The average difference between their season average and what they scored today, and their assigned cluster from our unsupervised learning clustering. So we're going to keep going through, no problem. Send our clusters to list. We run it as a set to get unique values only. We bump it back into a list so we get our unique cluster list uh, of the clusters we're going to be using. Then we have, this probably looks familiar, our for loop that's going to loop through each cluster and give me my predictions for that cluster and tell me how good it's doing, right? We're going to print out the average error. Uh, which is going to vary anywhere from 6 to 10 is the average error, which isn't great. Um, you'll probably want to do a little bit of tweaking, as we mentioned before, to figure out something better than this. This is a very basic model just to go over the key concepts and how it works. So moving forward with pickling. I've already described what pickling does, so we're going to hop right into it here. First thing we need to do is import the pickle module. Now don't worry. You say, but Nick, you didn't tell us what we needed to pip install for this module. That's fine. You don't need to pip install anything for Pickle because it comes as a default module with Python 2 and Python 3 distributions. So especially if you've downloaded the Anaconda distribution like I have here, if you're following along exactly, you already have Pickle. And I would imagine 99% of you, even if you didn't download the Anaconda distribution, you still have Pickle because it just comes with Python. So you just import Pickle. No problem. Now, the the way we're going to pickle something is pretty simple if you just think about it. And we're going to go with the pickling food comparison here to make sure everyone's on the same page. With open. So if we're pickling, we'll say we're, pick, we're making pickles. Okay, we got our sliced up cucumbers. What do we need to do? We need to open a jar. Okay. We need to put things in the jar. We need to close the jar. Right? Pretty simple. So when we're pickling anything, it doesn't have to be a model. In this exists, this instance, we're going to be pickling our unique cluster list here. So the 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 9, 11, 12. We're going to pickle that list just to show you with a very basic example how we can pickle it and unpickle it. Okay. 
So we are opening our jar, which is going to be this file that I'm defining right now. This is a non-existent file that I'm defining in this process. So with open file equals my text file dot text. It's a very arbitrary name. You don't have to name it that. Um, I have a relative file path there. That means it's going to save that text file in the same folder that this Jupyter Notebook is saved in on my computer. If you want to save it somewhere else, you just need to put in the full file path here and it'll save it there. Not a problem. As for putting things into the jar, remember we're working with computer code here, so you have to be explicit when you're telling it what to do. We know we have to put things in the jar when we're pickling. Peter doesn't know that. It just knows, oh, pickling, we have a jar. Okay, you gotta tell it. We're putting things in. And that's what this is. Mode equals WB. That means the mode in which we're interacting with this text file is writing and binary. Okay? That tells the computer that we are going to be writing to that file, and it gives it permission to do so. And that open file we're just going to refer to as the arbitrary variable my file okay pretty easy to remember it is in fact my file so it makes sense you can call that whatever you want it's completely irrelevant do you just have to make sure you use it again down here when we dump and dump all the food into the jar right so then while that file is open being referred to as the variable my file we're going to use the pickle module and we're going to use the dump command pickle dot dump and we're going to tell it what we want to dump and we're going to tell it where to dump it so we want to dump our unique cluster list aka all our chopped up cucumbers and we want to dump it into my file or into our mason jar okay so we run that and now we've dumped our list to that file so, so we want we can go look that up here we can go youtube look at that i got my text file dot text we can open it up and would you look at that, uh, that looks like nonsense, which is fine because we're writing to it in binary and for us to, for even just for Notepad to be able to open it up and present it to us, it goes through a bunch of weird little hoops and things that make no sense to us, but don't worry, your computer's got it under control. So we look, this is our unique cluster list, okay, we've already defined it previously up here, okay, um, so how are we going to figure out if we did this correctly? Well, quick easy way, while maintaining our same nomenclature so no one gets confused, we're going to redefine unique cluster list as an empty list. And then we're just going to run that list and make sure it prints out an empty list, and sure enough it does. So now unique cluster list, instead of printing out our list of clusters, we are printing out an empty list. But oh no, I need my clusters. That's fine. We just need to load using our pickle function. So again, with open my text file dot text. So we're telling computer, all right. Remember earlier when we, you know, we made the, the pickle stuff. We put it in a jar. We showed it up. We put it on the shelf. Now we're saying, okay, go back and get that jar off the shelf. So you, you know, you go get your jar. And now what are we doing with the jar? Now we are reading in binary, okay, or RB instead of WB. So now we tell the computer, okay, we have our jar again, but we're not adding more to it. Now we just want to open it up and see what's inside, okay? So again, we're just going to call it my file because that's simple and easy. And then we're going to reassign again the unique cluster list variable to pickle.load my file, okay? So what that's going to do is much the same as pickle.dump, dumped everything in pickle.load is going to read it out and assign it to our unique cluster list variable. So we're going to run that, and then we're going to run unique cluster list again. And big reveal, going to find out if it works or not, because remember, up here unique cluster list gave us an empty list. And now we're back to our cluster list, which just kind of really drive it home. If we just run unique cluster list here, we get our cluster list, we run it here, we get our cluster list because we've reassigned it. If we redefine it as an empty list, we come down here 
and we're getting an empty list again. Okay, just so you don't think I've done any underhanded Python tricks just to make it show up in one place and not the other. They're both showing up as an empty list. We're gonna load it up, run it again, and now we have our list. Okay, I didn't have to come back up here and rerun all of this to get my clusters. No siree, because I've pickled it. So now I can just pull it in, pop it in, ready to go. No problems. And this can have a wide range of applications. You know, it's not just for our model. It's not just for a basic list. For uh, instance, one of the things that I'll use it for is a data dictionary of player names. Because I'm sure you've noticed that the specific string for that player um, is going to be one thing on DraftKings, another on FanDuel, another on NBA.com, another on Basketball Reference. And I'm sure that that propagates out to pretty much every sport, right? I know it's terrible with juniors, seniors, the second, the third. Some of them have it, some of them don't. If they use a middle initial or a middle name, sometimes that's there, sometimes it's not. It really just depends. So this is an easy way for each data source to each uh, daily fantasy site you're using. You could have a data dictionary for each one of those. That way, because I that way when you go through, you can get all your stats and everything perfectly fine. But then when you start dumping in and making a model, you can just run through that data dictionary and use the replace command and pandas that we've used so many times before. And you can run through and just say, if the name is this, replace it with that. So you have the names of your data source and the keys, and the values are going to be the names for FanDuel or DraftKings or wherever it is that you're playing at. So there's a wide range of applications, not even limited to those. There's just a couple of quick examples that are relevant to what we're doing here. Um, but again, you're really only limited by your own imagination and ingenuity. So moving on from our pickling, we're going to pickle the model just so you can see how it's done. Even though we've already shown everything pickling, I know it, it makes a lot more sense if you see it applied to what you're wanting to actually apply it to in real life. So again, this is just copied code from up here and put into one cell instead of a bunch of different cells. So we run that, and we're just gonna do it on one cluster because I, I don't wanna go through all of them right now. We can do that in a later video. This is to show you how we can pull one model out and run our model over that data. So we are just gonna do cluster seven, okay? So we've redefined our cluster data variable, which as a refresher, cluster data is what we used in our for loop here. Okay, for every time we looped through, we would do use cluster data equals basically just slicing out that cluster's worth of data. Um, just so I didn't have to rewrite anything here, we're going to keep using the cluster data variable, but only assign it to cluster 7. So we're not looping through them all, we're just looking at cluster 7. This is going to be the exact same thing we did before. Our features, our labels, train test, defining our actual regression model. We're going to fit it to our training data. We're going to get our predictions out, look at actual predicted error, and print out to cluster 7 average error is, and then the mean of our error column. Okay, so we get that, and we see our average error is 9.32464. Okay, now let's do the same thing we did before. So with open file, my model file.txt, we're going to write to as the, you know, arbitrary variable my file we're going to write our model right here reg for regression and we're going to dump it to my file okay um, so I, I'm not going to go ahead and clear out this variable for reg we're just going to use a new variable name when we pull the model in so the like before I kind of had to double check and triple check the cluster list just to prove that I wasn't doing anything sneaky or underhanded we're just going to use a whole different variable name here and you can see if I run new model now, not defined. It means absolutely nothing, okay? If I were to run reg, you're going to see that it's a decision tree regression variable. So with our mymodelfile.txt open and our read mode or pulling it out of the jar, we're going to load my file into the variable name new model, okay? So now if I run new model, you can see it's a decision tree regressor, okay? But isn't gonna be the same decision tree regressor? That's a great question. So on our same data set, okay, our trained predictions, we had our trained data set, 
We're gonna use it because we wanna check if it's the same. So we're gonna run the exact same data set we've already defined, and we know that's gonna be accurate because we've already just broken down to cluster seven, and then we're only looking at the, the same variables. So we're gonna do the same thing, and we're gonna add all of that in, and we're gonna print out the error. And remember, we're using new model everywhere here instead of reg. Let's just double check, make sure reg isn't in here anywhere. I don't see it. Now let's see. We had 9.3246 before. Let's see what we have this time. 9.3246. Okay. There you have it. So if you wanted to do this, it, which I'm going to be honest with you, I wouldn't recommend just auto pickling as you loop through all of your clusters like that because maybe different clusters need different parameters tweaked. We really haven't gotten that far into the model building process yet. Um, but this pickling is going to be a foundation going forward for everything that gets done. Um, it's going to allow us so we don't have to open up a Jupyter notebook and run through all those cells just to get so we're at the right point now we can start building off of it. We can just take the model in whatever state it's at at the end, pickle it, and the next one we just load it right back up and we're good to go. That's enough for today. Don't want to ramble on anymore. Huge thank you to everyone on the Patreon. Uh, you see their names floating up right about now. Um, reminder, if anyone wants to be on the other side of the, the process here and kind of help drive things a little bit, at least have your voice heard a little bit uh, more influential than just in YouTube comments, hop on over to the Patreon, get in the private Discord server. Uh, a lot of fun stuff going on in there. As well as a reminder that, especially with this uh, Jupyter Notebook format, where we have kind of the descriptions built in here, um, I am loading these up to the website nixniche.net. There'll be a link down in the description for both that and the Patreon. If you want to check them out, feel free. And until next time, hope you guys have a wonderful few days.